Okay. Hi, right, so I'm Jackie uh, Blisson. I just uh, joined Opinion as uh, one of the new MWs for the tasting. So okay. it's very nice to meet you. I really enjoy tasting uh, a wide range of your wines. The 2019s, a couple, what was it, two sellers back? Yes, uh, exactly. Yes, I have here the, all the wines, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, Cabernet Franc, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Malbec. Perfect. And, and Mauricio, okay. uh, which uh, we just had the discussion with uh, Jackie. Which wine do you want to start with? I prefer to start with the Malbec. <laughs> okay. Second the, second, the Cabernet Sauvignon, and the third okay. to be the Cabernet Franc. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I said the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> They're your wine, so you know. So just, just to quickly, um, the rundown, uh, um, Mauricio, we're going to, uh, David's going to be the host uh, since Michael is on vacation in Cuba right now. Is he? In the, in the hot. This year, Mauricio here in Quebec, it's minus like 40 degrees. <laughs> it's very cold. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Um. <laughs> Uh, and and then what we'll do is uh, David will do a quick intro. Actually, he will just introduce you, and you will have a a quick. Uh, well, he's gonna introduce you and Jackie as the master in wine, and um, <clears throat> she got a chance to taste this year mm -hmm. the, the C two ninety two as well, C three hundred two. But also, we want you to quick uh, intro. Also, talk about uh, just like a uh, one minute. Just uh, talk about the uh, Grand Malbec, that is the feature wine. And we'll just also hint him that you are also the founder's choice producer, that you have an exceptional wine for us for the 50th anniversary. And we will, and David uh, will mention You don't want David to say that all in the intro, and then we get into these wines afterwards? Yeah. Maybe that's the easiest I'm way so, David I'm sorry, wine. I'm I said sorry, David can... If David said all that in the intro, the, yeah. the what's coming up, okay, okay, then you can focus on the wines that you have in front of you, so you won't have to remember. Okay, right. The founders. I okay. don't know, David. If that suits you. That's sort of you know the opinion. What's coming up <laughs> side of things before we get into the wines we yeah. have in front of us. And uh, okay. and, and David great. David will say that uh, we're gonna have a brown bag lunch on February 10th. Where uh, Mauricio will talk more about the Grand Mal. That one is next week, no? Yes, next next, Friday. next, next Saturday or yeah. Next I Friday. Think so. Next Friday. Next Friday. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Michael will be back from his holiday. He's back on a Thursday and a Friday. He's going to be all ten. Get back into it. And get Amazing. back. Into it. Okay. So should so. I just sort of do uh, like uh, just ask Mauricio questions to lead him into? Sure. Lead them into the wines. Does that work yeah. for you guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it, it's a conversation. It's yeah. and it's so great that Mauricio is there to talk about the wine, <clears throat> and you, Jackie, you're our master of wines, and you know now you get. No, it's great. I, I I have not had the pleasure of having the winemaker on the call yet for one of these, so this is so much more <laughs> interesting than just a talking head. Yeah. I, okay. I don't have the wines. I don't have the wines with me, Maurizio, but I'm I'm an old member, so I'm working on that right now. The Opalo. Ah, the Opalo Malbec. The Opalo. The Opalo Malbec, yeah. Oh, that's cool. One of the first the, wines I bought. From, from that, that, that is one of the oldest label, you yeah. know, the, the Opalo Malbec. Is, uh, that was, you know, the first wine in Argentina, uh, high quality, no oak. Okay, wow. In 2003. So when everybody was following Robert Parker. <laughs> Robert Parker was over right wine and 100% new oak. <laughs> I... I <laughs> I start to sell, you know, a wine with a oak. So it was, was crazy. Um, <laughs> it's the special thing in, behind that wine, you know? Perfect. Maybe you started the trend away from those over-oaked Robert Parker wines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's uh, 301. I'm going to let people in. And yeah. Here, cool. Here we go. Okay. Well, let's keep... 
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the TMC tasting for this Saturday, February the 4th. Uh, just, as a, just as a quick reminder, if we can, everyone can be on mute um, for the duration of the, of the tasting. Uh, questions, we have the chat open for everybody and uh, questions can come right in. We have uh, some very special guests uh, today. My name is David Markovich. I'm the head of marketing at Opimian. And we have running the board, Kim Chen, the man marketing manager, who everyone is familiar with. Our special guests today come all the way from Argentina as we begin to defrost here in Canada. He's the only one on the phone in a t-shirt. And that is from Western Argentina, Maurizio Lorca. And as well from, uh, from uh, rural Quebec right now, we're uh, bringing in our master of wine, Jackie Blisson. Who's, uh, Hello, everybody. Go. Which is great. Maurizio is uh, actually, if you are familiar with the cover of this month's seller, I um, hope it's not blurred out for you, but uh, he's right there. He's uh, one of Opinion's longtime uh, producers, and uh, he will be on the in the Founders Choice program. His wines will are featured uh, in the Founders Choice program. There, we can't really say which wines yet, but maybe Maurizio will go into further detail next week on on the Brown Bag Lunch, which we are, which he will be hosting on February the 10th. We hope to see everyone there as well. Uh, as well in, in this month's cellar, he's also the feature wine, the Gran Reserva, which is an Opimian wine and uh, which is Opimian uh, specifically produced wine for our 50th anniversary. That is tasting great, which is gonna be on my menu when uh, ordering, ordering time comes. So without further ado, I present you Maurizio Lorca and Jackie Blisson. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday. Uh, I'm just going to give you a, a really quick, for those who aren't familiar with Maurizio, maybe I'll just give you a very quick intro uh, into this very impressive winemaker who's taken time from his Saturday to be with us today. And then, uh, you know, we'll jump into some tasting together. Maurizio, I thought it was so great uh, reading about your biography, about what you've done in the wine world, that actually winemaking wasn't your first choice. You first initially studied to be a doctor, right? Um, let me see. Is my microphone open, no? Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yes, that, that's right. I, I was ready to go in in the doctor university and the, at the last day, probably one day before the last day of the high school, some, some student from the Enology University came to our school, my, my school in that, in that time was technical, you know, and so they were looking for, you know, people with that profile, uh, uh, um, classmate, you know, and, and they made a wonderful presentation. And I said, oh my God, this is great. I would like to do that. <laughs> so, so finally, what did your I, <laughs> was, was so, so interesting because it was like that, you know, and, and, and I come back to my home after, uh, after that day and, and say, mom, sorry, I'm going to study enologist. And she said, are you crazy? Imagine, <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe 30 years ago or something like that, 33 years ago, to have a doctor in a family were mm -hmm. so good, you know? So, and I, no, sorry, but I, I like this. I, and I think it's, it's a great opportunity and we live in a, in a province where there is vineyard everywhere. So I, I see a future there. And she said, okay, but I'm not agree. <laughs> so <laughs> I, well, but next day I went to the university I, and, and I get in and well, here I am, you know, it's, uh, it was, everything was fine. And, and I'm so glad because I took that decision in that time. I think you're very humble in saying that everything worked out fine because Maurizio, when he graduated, as an enologist, he went and worked for some names that you might be familiar with, Catena Zapata, Michel Torino in Salta, then came back to Mendoza to be head winemaker at Luigi Bosca, and finally Finca La Seria. Before, is it in 2002 that you established your winery? In 2003, I established my own winery. Um, uh, was the, uh, my last job was in Finca La Celia, Chilean company in, in Argentina. That was a great thing for me because I, I started to travel, you know, 
And, and I went to London Winter Firm, uh, to Paris, to the London in, in France, uh, sorry, to the fair in France, in many places. And I discovered mm -hmm. that this is something I can do for me, you know? Yeah. So I come back, uh, I got all that experience and, and say, okay, I, I would like to create my own company. So uh, in, 19, in 1999, I, I planted a small vineyard in 2003, I had my first production. So uh, I said, okay, if I not put my face on the wine, you know, it's going to be difficult to sell. So finally I decided to quit and leave, left all the things and start my own, my own company. So called Bodega Mauricio Lorca. Um, well, in, in 20 years now, <laughs> the, the time happens so fast. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I have a company with uh, 30, 31 different markets ar around the world. I'm selling very wow. well in Argentina. We have 60, 65 employees, you know, in the company. Um, I don't know, it's, uh, everything was success, behind success and other success, everything was fine. Yeah. I, so now your I'm mother so, is so, so sad that you didn't become a doctor. Yes, I, I have some <laughs> friends. They they became doctor, and I and I uh -huh. when I tell them, you know, no, I'm traveling to Canada. I'm traveling to United States. I'm going to Brazil now and to Europe. <laughs> I said, you know, you are doing all that thing, and I'm in the hospital, you know, all the I, time. <laughs> I should have become an analogist. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, I took a right uh, a good decision. <laughs> So I think our guests today are probably keen to start cracking open their bottles. And we asked uh, Maurizio just beforehand the order of tasting of these beautiful Poetica wines. And Maurizio said yes. we're going to start with the Malbec. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what makes the Vista Flores uh, area of the Uco Valley so special. What makes it really oh. a great place to grow these grapes? Yuko Valley, Yuko Valley is, uh, is probably the upcoming places in Argentina. It's the place where most of the foreign investors come in the last 15, 20 years, just because the weather condition, the altitude, the soil and everything. So they are the, the average altitude is about in between 1,000 to 1,200 meters above sea level. So mm -hmm. the, the different temperature in that place between day and night is the gap is huge, it's, it's more than 20, 25 degrees. So you can mm -hmm. have 30, 35 during the day. At night can be 10, 8, 12, you know, something like that. So the ripening is very slow. The mm -hmm. concentration, the accumulation of flavor and color, tanning, everything you need for a good wine is perfect in that, in that condition. The soil in general can be, uh, can go between a stone, sandy, some clay, but it's all normally the soil is very deep. Uh, it's more more sandy than anything else, and then mm -hmm. you can have more poor poor uh, soils where you can find more stone. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, um, and the other the other important thing uh, in Mendoza, if the people didn't visit Mendoza in the past, never been here, um, we have. Uh, in Mendoza City, you can see the pre-mountain, you know, the pre-Los Andes mountain. But yeah. in Yuko Valley, there is not pre-Los Andes mountain. You see only the mountain, the big one. So the, is, this is why the, the, the temperature at night is colder, okay? And the other thing is our weather there is continental. It's totally continental. So we have to irrigate. It's very dry only 200 millimeters of rain per year, which is wow. very low. The vines need minimum seven, 700, 800. So we need to irrigate, okay? <laughs> so we use drip irrigation for all our vineyards and we can control the, the growing, the yield, the, the quality of the grape in general, just through the water. Okay, yeah. so it's another difference. But Yuko Valley is a very clean area. You know, there is no factories, there is no contamination. So it's a great place to grow grapes. And, and this is why uh, it's so special. 
Absolutely. Now, these high altitude plantings, uh, Marito was explaining this difference between the daytime and the nighttime. And this is so important because photosynthesis to the vine uh, will actually slow down, sometimes stop when it gets really cold at nighttime. And this really preserves and retains the freshness in wine. So during the day, you have this abundant sunshine. And actually, because you're at higher altitude, you have more intense UV light coming down. Um, and so you're actually developing, the, the, the grapes will actually develop a thicker skin as a sort of a sunblock to protect themselves. So you get these mm -hmm. grapes with beautiful thick skins, great color, great concentration in the wine, beautiful fruit from these sunny days, this wonderful ripening, but then this shutting down overnight. So it maintains really lovely freshness. So you get these wines, if you tasted through the three, that have just really, really fresh, bright personalities and gives them beautiful balance against these fuller bodied, bolder character. And I think that's so special in Uco Valley. I also find Uco Valley wines have a lovely plurality in general. You always find those violet or lavender or, or just some really nice uh, dark fruits, but also a lovely floral character that's so nice. It really comes through on your three wines. Should we uh, jump onto the Malbec? Malbec 2018? Yes, so the, the, first, the first one I suggest to try is the Malbec, this one. Yeah. You know, and the, um, the great thing with this wine, I, I think you described, uh, Jackie, you described the, the wine very well, you know. Uh, what you will find here is the fresh character of the Malbec, some violets, yeah. some plum, and at the same time, some red fruit, but the, the, the style of blackberry or something like that, you know, it's very fresh, easy drink. The wine is, the wine was uh, aging in, in, in barrel for 12 months, okay? Uh, what I do here is I keep 30% uh, of the wine in new new oak, Thir mm -hmm. another 30% first use, and another 30% second use. And at the end of the aging, I like to add another 10%, you know, of the wine without oak, just to give the right balance between oak and fruits, you know. And you will feel a the wine is, is very easy to drink, it's very fresh, there is concentration, but it's smooth. Uh, I think this is the key, uh, you know, to have a lot of concentration, a lot of typicity, but always approachable and, drink and drinkable, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's definitely the case. You, the tannins are in no way aggressive. They're, they provide lovely framework and structure to the wine, but they're soft enough. You can drink this now exactly. or you could easily age it for, and I look think, at, Look at the color of the years. wine. Look at the mm -hmm. color. It's very violet. Yeah. There is no devolution. Yeah. It's a seed young, you know. This is a wine that has the great age potential. Okay, mm -hmm. you, you can keep it the wine for another two or three years if you want, uh, because the wine is still fresh, you know. So it's a four year old wine, you know, but it's, it's still fresh, fresh and, yeah. and, and, and you don't see any, any evolution in the color, you know. <laughs> or in the flavor profile, it's still very fresh, very yeah. primary. I and forgot to mention the, anybody has any long, questions. How long is the wine in the mouth? You know, it's very, very long yeah. in, in the mouth, you know, very absolutely. watery. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Really long, straight line. Uh, Marito, what obviously in Argentina, steak is a pretty typical pairing. Uh, red meat is a very typical pairing with this sort of wine. But uh, what else would you would you uh, suggest as a great pairing? For, you know, for this the, the, the Malbec is very flexible, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, the beef is okay and it's... Uh, it's something that we do frequently, you know, a, a good piece of steak <laughs> yeah. with, with Malbec. But uh, I like to, to have pasta, for example, the pasta with bolognese, this, this kind of salt, mm -hmm. is a perfect wine for that, you know. And, yeah. and even, even with uh, some, how do you say, embutidos, you know, uh, salami, cheese, or that kind of thing, for me, is a great wine to, to drink to, you know, to pair with. Yeah, that's a good point. It's very versatile wine. It, it's, yes, a, it has it a good tannic framework, but it has very uh, a sort of a velvety character on the palate uh, and that freshness that you can really pair with quite a while. And it's not so robust and so full body that it would overpower lighter things. So it's easy drinking wine. Again, if anybody has any questions, you can easily put them in the chat or put your hand up and we can unmute you. Uh, feel free to participate. We love everybody's questions. But I think this is, I know you make quite a, a number of different Malbecs. And so are you looking for with your different Malbecs uh, specifically to this one, specifically the Poetico, are you looking specifically to express Vista Flores or is it more of a, are you blending across many, many different parcels and it's an expression of Malbec you're looking for? What's your, 
to remain gold Normally, with this? Um, well, in my philosophy, 90% 90, 90 of the wine is making in the vineyard. It's not making mm -hmm. in the winery, you know? Yeah. So uh, every single wine uh, we produce come from a specific place in our vineyard. Okay, mm -hmm. so in this case, this Malbec is uh, is 25, 27 years old. The vines are 25, 27 okay. years old, you know, and is 100% Malbec uh, muscle selection. This means that it's not a French clone or something like that. It's a Cut muscle selection. Means, yes, it's a selection from Mendoza, you know, the, our typical Malbec from here. Um, and normally the, the yield in this case is no more than seven ton per hectare, okay? okay. Uh, which is very low. For example, the potential production can be in between 10 to 12, okay? So wow. the, we, we leave the less production looking for more concentration, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, to be honest, uh, the, the wine, this is exactly the quality we get from this a specific block in that vineyard, okay? So, and every year is more or less the same thing because we get the grain from the grape from this uh, this specific place, okay? So that's a good point that Mauricio brought up. When we're talking about concentration in wine, I'm not sure if everybody knows exactly what that means, but when you've got the wine and you're tasting it on your palate, that feeling that there's depth, that the flavor has richness and has layers and has uh you know a real a real sense of uh, fullness on the palate that's what we mean when we're talking about concentration and definitely lower yields uh, so the sap going up through the plant anybody's a gardener here it's a you know going up through the plant is going to then be distributed to less uh to less bunches of grapes bunches so of cluster, yes. less bunches yes, they're, they're, they're going to be they're, more they're Sorry, the, the vines uh, have a, a, who say, a potential uh, production of chlorophyll, you know, mm -hmm. according with the, with the canopy. You have this yeah. size of canopy, you know, so you can produce an, an amount of chlorophyll. That chlorophyll, if you, if you use it, you know, for less bunches, of course, the ripening is going to be much better, okay, mm -hmm. and the accumulation of flavor of color. So that... Yeah. that that is why we need to decrease the production looking for more concentration, okay? Absolutely, and another point that Mauricio told me that was important was he's, he's saying the vines are mature vines. These are vines that are 25 years or older. And that also naturally regulates the vine. A vine has a tendency, depending on the grape variety, but um, has a tendency to be very vigorous in its youth and then slowly produce a little bit less as it gets older. And that also helps with getting this concentration of flavor. So older vines and and really going out and intentionally lowering yields through pruning uh, are, are ways to really make sure you're getting this concentration. And this is really at the symbol concentration is one of the main things when we're tasting wines for opinion, it's one of the main things we're looking for. We're looking for balance, that the freshness of the body, the flavors are all in harmony and for concentration, uh, this depth I was talking about, this fullness on the palate and complexity. Complexity, when you're smelling the wine, when you're tasting the wine, it's not just one flavor profile you're getting. You're getting a whole mix of things. You're getting, you know, on this wine I'm getting, I was mentioning before, I have lovely floral notes. I have hints of dark chocolate. I have dark fruits. I have blue fruits. I, you know, there's a lot of different things happening on the wine. And as I let it sit in my glass and aerate, it evolves even more. That's a sign of complexity. And these are all things we're looking for in wines of this caliber. Yes, uh, um, even... It uh, could be good, you know, to decant this wine and wait something like 25, 30 minutes before to to drink it because the, the, those wines that have at least three years in bottle, you know, need some air, you know, to, mm -hmm. to express all their potential, you know. Yeah, that's a very good point. Shall we move on to the Cabernet Sauvignon? This is the second one we're going to taste yes. today. I love these labels, by the way. Uh, these are just really beautiful Thank labels you. to bring out for a dinner table. Were you... Uh, the inspiration behind this, or what does the sort of wave effect mean? On well, you know, is I, I, you know, I'm not very good with labels. Uh, that is somebody that designed the label for me. I'm, I'm yeah. my 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 specific job is to make the wine. <laughs> of course, but the, the, <laughs> well, the idea, you, make you know, to make your labels because they're very pretty. <laughs> uh, but the 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 idea, you know, is to 
to show something artistic, you know, in, in the label. It's a, that more or less that is it. <laughs> well, okay. I'd say they're very, very so, attractive. Well, this this Cabernet Sauvignon come from uh, one of our vineyards located in, in Los Arboles. Los Arboles, the altitude there is 100 and, well, sorry, 1,250 meters above sea level. So it's very high altitude. And the soil there is very, very poor, very poor. There you can see uh, sandy and stone, you know, um, and normally the irrigation there is, is more complicated because the, there is no rotation of the humidity. Yeah, okay? the sandy soil won't absorb the, won't hold yeah. on to the So, so there we, we manage the irrigation totally different compared with Vista Flores. And, and the, the thing is we have to irrigate every day, two hours, and in Vista Flores, for example, what we do is every three days, eight hours, you know, oh, wow. just to give you an idea. So and in, you're in using case, the snow melt water for your irrigation? You're using just we melted use, snow? Yes, exactly. All the, all the water comes from the Los Andes mountain, from the snow. Uh, in some, in some cases, we get the water from the wells, from underground, and, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes from the river. Okay, it depends on the location of the vineyard. When you are going in a more altitude, there is mm -hmm. not a pendant to bring the water from the river. Okay, you have to work, you have to, to use the wells and get the, the water from the underground. Okay, so the quality is really, really good. It's the same thing, just because it's, um, the water comes from Los Andes, but mm -hmm. the, 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 the way from where you get the the, um, the water is different, okay? Source, yeah. I, I mentioned this, uh, you might be wondering, uh, people who are listening in why we're talking about where the irrigation water comes from, but I think this is important because we talk about, when we're talking about sustainability in vineyards nowadays, irrigation yeah. is a hot topic. People are saying, you know, it's wasting a lot of water to be using it on luxuries like wine, but in uh, Argentina and the Mendoza region especially, this is snow melt water for the most part. It, you know, it is abundant, it is coming back every winter. So this is a sustainable source of water that's being yeah. used in well, Argentina. We, we know, you know, we recently, we got the sustainability certification, uh, something like one and a half months ago in, I, I, I think at, in December. Um, and one of the most important thing was the how we use the water, <laughs> because <laughs> so it's a limited resources and and we have to to be you know very carefully uh, how yeah. to use it. We in hundred percent of our vineyard we we use uh, drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. um, we have a very sophisticated si system that measures the, the humidity in the soil and the. I don't know how to say this in English, but it's evapotranspiration. You know yeah. how much water it's very similar. Yeah, yeah, the, leaf, the, the uh, you know? evaporation and transpiration. The evaporation so you're really only irrigating when the soil requires it, and you're not wasting water. Exactly. So with all that information, we decide how how much water we, we have to add to the vineyard. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's super efficient. And, and at, at the end, it's a, it's a resource that we have to, to care very much. And well, it's what we do. <laughs> uh, That's important. Yeah, uh, we are not using herbicide, nothing. And, and you know, the, the, the idea is to produce the, the wine in the more, with the less interview as possible, you know. Less intervention as possible. Absolutely. And it's so important now to be thinking about things like that. Yeah. Uh, vines that are farmed with no herbicides, with no pesticides, and making wines really conscious in, to leave the land in better shape for the next generation. Yeah. It's sort of the main, yeah. main goal so, now when we talk about sustainable wine. Well, I and mean, in this wine, you will find a beautiful color too. You know, it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah. it's still young. You can see the, the color is very nice. You will find the typical ripe pepper. I say ripe pepper yep. because you like feel the pepper, pepper rather than a green, white, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you will see the, the concentration of this Cabernet Sauvignon is fantastic. And the, um, and the, and the uh, how do you say, the, the, the smooth is very soft, which is not usual in Cabernet Sauvignon. Well, you still have lovely typicity. You still find that typicity, as you say, those hints of vegetal notes, but more red pepper, more ripe pepper than green pepper, but that, that really sort of give a lot of personality and a lot of typicity mm -hmm. to a Cabernet Sauvignon. You still have that slightly leaner, without 
any loss of concentration, but a, more of a sinewy, leaner profile on the palate, all that freshness and the tannins are really chiseled, really fine grains that are really nice. We have a nice comment actually, just going back to your Malbec for one second. Jean-Paul, who was uh, tasting along with us today, said he, I'm not normally a Malbec fan uh, since we get many mediocre ones at the local stores, but I very much like this one. Congratulations. So, oh, thank you. Share that thank comment you very from, much. Uh, this is from great. Jean-Paul, Jean -Paul, what do you think of the Cabernet Sauvignon? <laughs> <laughs> But I love because these are two wines made, obviously we we're talking about them being from different vineyard areas, but um, you you often find, I often find when I'm tasting wines from a similar region, from a similar winemaker, you know, you don't always get as much typicity from one grape to the other. Whereas I find there's a very distinctive personality here for the Malbec and the Cabernet Sauvignon. And you really showed that varietal character well. Well, that region. is very important, Jackie. That is very important, you know, to show the real, the real character of the grape, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I think at Argentina many years ago made a very big mistake that was to pick the grape overripe and age the wine in in new barrels, because finally you you with that uh, wine making process, you know, you lost the the real potential, the real typicity of the grape. You know, so the, it's the why vanilla you know, and cedar flavors yeah, of the oak. You know, you, you feel over. more mermelade or you know that that kind of descriptor which don't don't show the real potential, the real the real character of the grape, you know. Exactly. Absolutely agree. Jean-Paul also likes your Cabernet Sauvignon. He says, I like it too because it's not over the top has a very nice tasting profile. I could pair this with many foods. And we were talking about that with the Malbec, how versatile yeah. it was for pairing. And I think this Cabernet Sauvignon is, has that similar versatility. You know, the, the, the elegance, uh, the, the simplicity, the, the full body, but fine, you know, not, not that yeah. big wine that mm -hmm. uh, are dry, difficult to drink. I, I don't like that, you know, I prefer this kind of wine, more fine, more elegant, more, where you feel the typicity, you feel the, the, the body, the concentration, but it's always smooth, soft, easy drink, you know? Yeah, you can still drink a glass without feeling heavy, feeling like it's too much. Yeah, exactly. lovely, really lovely wine. Uh, do you, you have a favorite, favorite uh, pairing option for this wine that you would like to share? Well, if you if someday you decide to come to come to Mendoza, I will prepare a beautiful asado, typical okay. barbecue in Argentina, and the Cabernet Sauvignon goes fantastic with that. That's perfect wine for that. Okay, all right, I'm putting it in my calendar. It's perfect. I especially like the finish of this wine because you have that very subtle. In French, they have a wonderful expression called l'amertume uh, noble, l'amertume noble, so noble bitterness. And by this, you mean that slight, slight, slight bitterness, like dark chocolate, cocoa type bitterness, but that's really yeah. refreshing. It sort of makes you salivate, makes you want to take another sip. And I find that the Cabernet Sauvignon really has that, that character on the finish, which is lovely. Well, uh, yeah. Kim, Kim Chen wants to come on the Argentina trip. She's putting her hand up. Of so. course, of course. Going together, yeah. going yeah. together. <laughs> we'll all go. <laughs> So should we jump well, on to our so last wine here, the Cabernet Franc? Let me, let me tell you a, a beautiful, beautiful history about behind this Cabernet Franc. Okay? Please do. Uh, for a couple of years, the, the Mendoza airport was closed. Okay? okay. So the typical trip from, from Canada to, to South America that Opinion did for many years, they couldn't come to Mendoza because the airport for, was closed. So I, I went to Chile uh, for the regular tasting we were doing every year. And, and I took all the, all the bottles that normally they, the, the, the selection of that time, I don't remember, but I, I got one wine special that was the Cabernet Franc, okay? Mm -hmm. So we did the tasting in Chile. Um, and after we finished, we, we taste all the wine that were selected for opinion for the, for the next year. And I said, I brought a, a very special wine, which is Cabernet Franc. Mm. Everybody, everybody at the same time, they say, no, Cabernet Franc, no, 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 we don't <laughs> like Cabernet Franc. Please, come on. I, I, I no, travel from Mendoza. Your face falls after carrying yeah, the yeah. bottle. I travel from Mendoza. You must try the Cabernet Franc. And I... Yeah. I'm totally sure you will like it, but 
you have to try. Well, finally I say, okay, yeah, you are here, you brought the bottle and you know well. Yeah. So after after I put the wine to everybody, they start to try and say, well, Mauricio, but this is not Cabernet Franc. Yes, 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 uh -huh. this is Cabernet Franc, but from Mendoza. Did you try Cabernet Franc or Mendoza before? No, okay. This is the typical the of Mendoza. Wow, this is beautiful. So after that tasting, <laughs> every yeah. year uh, we are selling Cabernet Franc uh -huh. in opinion, you know? <laughs> It's true. That's, you it, think that's it. the history. <laughs> Malbec did such a good job uh, positioning itself as Argentina's grape that, uh, you know, which in a way, it, it, to a degree is a good thing. It is a grape that is beautifully adapted to, to, to Mendoza, but yeah. it's, it can also be a handicap because everybody thinks of the one variety, whereas there are, there's such a diversity of, you know, microclimates and terroirs and, and soils and topography in the area that you can grow all these different grapes. And Cabernet Franc, I find more and more is a grape that is just doing so, so well, and especially in the upper reaches where you have the cool, the cooling influences of altitude. Um, oh, we have all Look, sorts of comments there, there, coming there in. Is, yes, there is somebody telling that this is not Cabernet Franc, you know. <laughs> I, somebody, so, somebody brought that, you know. And it's, oh, here uh, you go. We were on this trip. We remember that reaction <laughs> to the Cabernet Franc. However, we've always been fans of Cabernet Franc and tasting yours was a revelation. Once you have the best, uh, the, one of the best we've ever tasted, he said. And John well, and Teresa you know, are said, coming to you, Lorca. They're coming to see you next month. Two of our members, John and Teresa, are coming to see you next month, and they said they can't wait. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. Fantastic. Uh, well, yeah. you know, but this Cabernet Franc is very special. I am very, very big fan of Cabernet Franc. I think it's, it's a great wine. Uh, why, 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 it's, what, it's what is it about well Cabernet Franc that you like so much? Sorry, sorry? What is it about Cabernet Franc that you like so much that you got, you know? No, I think the, uh, it's, a, it's a great that right more or less at the same time of the Malbec. Okay. So the ripening is always complete. It's, it's always good. Uh, the expression of the wine, you know, the mint character, the fruit, the, 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 the acidity of the Cabernet Franc, I think is fantastic. I am making Cabernet Franc from since 2001, I think. Uh, so I, I am very big fan. I, I think it's a, it's a very well adapted grape in, uh, uh, to our altitude, weather and soil. So, mm -hmm. and, and the expression is quite unique. You know, uh, somebody or normally the people ask me, Mauricio, why the Cabernet Franc is becoming so popular in Argentina and, and in other countries? And I say, because the wine is nice, you know, <laughs> it's easy to drink, the tannins are soft, you know, there is a lot of flavor, color, and, and, and it smell beautiful, you know, and, and, it, and I think that is the reason. Finally, the people that really uh, like uh, drink wine, when they detect something unique and different, they stay, you know, they, they, they yeah. keep doing that, you know? So it's a, um, it's a wine that I really love it. Uh, the grape come from the same place in Los Arboles, high altitude. The ripening, is, yeah, the ripening is fantastic and you can, you can feel it. Uh, mm -hmm. The tannins are very, very soft and smooth. And, and I don't know, it's, it's a great wine. You were talking earlier about uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon being very drinkable, very, and I find that this Cabernet Franc as well is just, uh, it has a, a, a lot of body, it has a lot of concentration, a lot of flavor, but it is, it's so fresh uh, and it has that minty uh, quality to it. And it's just a, such an easy drinking uh, wine with no lack of complexity. It's really, really, really nice. This again, we were saying both of the wines we've tasted so far, we're saying so easy to pair with so many different things, not over the top, not over, you know, in the past, a lot of Mendoza, Malbecs and, and Cabernet Sauvignons and, and uh, other grapes are, you're seeing 14.5, 15%, 15.5% alcohol. Here, I think they're all sitting around 14 and they feel really fresh. It, you know, yeah. there's, that, there's no heaviness, there's no- You know, uh, another, another, important, another important thing, I, I, I picked the grape, you know, not for the sugar level, if not for the acidity. Okay. You know, it's comparable with, I don't know, uh, North Hemisphere. Normally, they, they are looking for more sugar. Uh, in our case, we look for more acidity. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the opposite, you know. So, it, and, it, and it's so important because natural acidity means that the wine is going to be uh, better with the time. You know, the, the aging the of the wine is going, to be, is going to be better. 
So the management of the vineyard is, is one of the most important thing. If we, if we do a, a proper and perfect management, we can, we can get the beautiful um, ripening mm -hmm. and keep a, a good natural acidity. Okay, so that that is more is one of the most important thing for me. Absolutely. How long would you? So this wine is 2018. It's still so youthful. It's drinking really nicely now. How long do you, would you hold it for? Well, you know, you know I I, I, I like to stuff. drink I like to drink this wine with five years old normally, yeah. but if you keep it for another two or three years, the wine are going to be fantastic. Okay, the evolution is going to be great. No problem. Yeah. So there you go. For those of you who want to crack them all open now, you can. They're ready, but they'll hold really nicely for, for easily another three or four years. Uh, and just, yeah, all three are just showing really, really nicely. And I think all three we mentioned earlier, great to decant them if you can, half an hour, 45 minutes before you eat, just to really that... Um, the interplay between the oxygen when you're pouring the wine yeah. into the decanter is just going to open them up. It's just a chemical reaction that happens in the wine that really just opens up, reveals a lot more flavor, a lot more uh, aromatics, and just softens as well a little bit more the tannin and, the, and then the body of the wine. So great idea. And I also, I like to serve red wine a teeny bit chilled. Not, you know, because when we talk about room temperature, especially here in Canada in the winter when it's cold outside, we have a tendency to keep <laughs> our house at 20 degrees, 21, 22 for some people. So you might want to bring it down just a little bit, bring it down 17, 18 degrees. Uh, yes. Because serving wine too mm -hmm. hot, you lose a lot of the freshness, you lose a lot of that, that the, the brightness of its aromatics. So another another tip there. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Maurizio? Anybody have any, want to know a little bit more about Mendoza or about these specific wines or other wines? There's one of the wines that I really loved from the recent, uh, the 2019 vintage tasting we did just recently for a, an upcoming seller was your um, just great value and, and so drinkable was the Fantasia Syrah. You do some yeah, lovely very nice. as well. well. Quality price, that that range, and quality just, price yeah. is fantastic. It's fantastic. For everyday yeah, drinking, it's very that, nice. It's really well, the, the, the grape delicious. we use, uh, the grape I use for those wines come from Vista Flores too. And of course, there is more production in the vineyard, but it's still fantastic. The quality of the grape is great. Yeah. I think it's fantastic because within your uh, range of wines, you have some really great value everyday drinking wines and you go right up to your beautiful uh cellaring wines and uh, you know everything in between and i always think it's a sign of a great winemaker obviously most people when they're discovering a new winemaker a new winery will start with a cheaper wine uh see if they like it and then move up the ranks so i think it's always the, a sign of a great winemaker is that they're able to make uh delicious you know really well balanced entry-level wines well, what, one of the one of the most difficult thing is to have a wine for every pocket. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Jean-Paul has a question here. He says, it's off topic, but Jackie, could you explain the similarities between aeration and decanting? They are used interchangeably, but are they really? Yes. So it's, it's not the exact same thing. Aeration can happen in your glass. It can happen anyway. Aeration is just the the the... the oxygen mixing with the wine and decanting is a process to do that decanting by decanting you are allowing air uh aeration to happen uh, um, so Jackie, to and, and the, with the decanting what you add another thing which is the in the case of the wine has a, a lot of time in bottle normally can have you know some small deposit in the in the in the bottom of the bottle so when you yes. decant the wine you know you can you can leave that deposit on the, the on the yeah. on the bottom. There's that, yeah. Yeah. and that's another exactly. important aspect in the of decanting. Side. Yeah, exactly. So you, you definitely want to make sure, especially with an older wine, that when you're decanting, you're going slowly, so you don't. If you if you go too quickly, you can mix all of that sediment up into the wine, which is not going to hurt you in any way, but you know it's not as pleasant on the palate to drink. So that's another important thing about absolutely. Uh, John and Teresa were wondering if they missed. Maurizio's recommended pairings. So we, it's true, we didn't have a pairing for the Cabernet Franc, I think. We had pairing for the Malbec. So the Malbec was quite wide. We said, you can pair it with your traditional steak, but you can also pair it with, with a wide number of things. Even spaghetti bolognese would work well, or a charcuterie type plate with hard cheeses would be great. With the Cabernet Sauvignon, 
a typical, uh, can asado. you explain an asado? You mentioned asado. For those who don't know what that is, can you explain? This is for the the asado is the typical barbecue in Argentina. You know, uh, the cuts are totally different compared with everything in the world. So it's, you have to be here. You know, it's the only okay. way. I cannot explain. It's difficult to okay. explain because Different you have to see and try and, here. A special, <laughs> and all the beautiful sauces that you make mm, to go with it. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, we are in Chimichurri and all that thing. With short ribs and chimichurri. Yeah. <laughs> so they're having that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and then for the Cabernet Franc, you had a specific other, another well, idea. Know, I, I think, for example, I'm, I'm spending time in Galicia now because I'm making wine there. Um, and I was tasting those wine with some fish, um, oh, and I, okay. I I very like it. You know uh, the way they prepare, for example, merluza a la gallega, uh, the cabernet franc goes fantastic. You know, and and, and even with uh, salmon uh, at the barbecue. You know, they they prepare yeah. with with um, well, barbecue salmon or thing like that. The cabernet franc goes fantastic. Of course, it's a wine that goes very well with beef and same thing, you know, but, yeah. uh, but in general, it's a very flexible one too. Yeah, I can see that you, you would definitely want to go with a fish that was, uh, like you said, salmon, like a darker, firmer fleshed fish, yeah. like a tuna or salmon or something along those lines. But I can see with that really bright acidity and those slight sort of vegetal type hints on the, on the Cabernet Franc, I can see how that would be really, really nice. And again, a really versatile wine. So pairing for all of those, Kim Chen gave the information for the Fantasia Sierra for uh, coup de coeur, there you go, for uh, an upcoming seller. Um, is there anything else before we let Maurizio get back to his, what, what time is it in uh, Mendoza? It's right uh, quarter, quarter to, to six. Oh, so almost time for an aperitif. Or you start later. <laughs> you start later. Here we start earlier because it gets dark so early. We tend to have to start having our first drink around six o'clock. But I think it's uh, look. At, there is somebody that wants to know about the Petit Verdot. Yeah. Uh, I, I I I read something here. Well, Petit Verdot is is another another grape. I very very like it. You know, it's very unusual to find hundred percent Petit Verdot. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's always used for blends. In fact, I planted the vineyard thinking in blends. And then, uh, because I very like the wine, I start to to sell it as single grape, you know. But it's a very powerful wine. You will yes. you will see the concentration. There yeah. is a lot of concentration, and there, I I suggest you know more the hunting meat, you know something like more strong, because mm -hmm. it's the wine is strong. Okay, there is much more concentration, and it's a wine that you can age for ten years no problem. Okay. You should come, if you come here, we have wonderful bison and deer meat and things like venison. Uh, yeah. Uh, they would, yeah, are perfect for, for wine like Petit Verdot that's got, as you said, much more robust and powerful, bigger tannins. Uh, yeah. But lovely wine when it's ripened sufficiently, it really is very nice. And it's true, we do, it often gets put into a blend and forgotten about it. So it's nice to see Petit Verdot becoming the star of its own wines. Does anybody else have any? Oh, Kim Chen, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question regarding the Zapam Zukum of this year. Can I had it the one two years ago? Can you and I just tried the Pratico Malbec. Can you give me a little bit the how is this one from this year? Com, considering it's not the same region, is La Rioja in Argentina? So, Mauricio, can you talk? Uh, uh, give me a little bit more. Uh, explain a little bit more about the Zapam Zukum Malbec. I'm, I'm sorry, Kim, I didn't understand what you said. It, it, I don't uh, okay. hear you very well. Oh, sorry. okay. Because um, uh, I just had the Malbec from the Puetico. Can you give me the, the, the difference with the Zapam Zucum Malbec? Ah, okay, okay. Uh, no, Zapam Zucum is an is a organic wine, you know, made with organic grape from La Rioja. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's another terroir, it's another location. La Rioja, La Rioja is located 600 kilometers to the north of Mendoza. Okay, mm -hmm. so there the, the weather is drier compared with Mendoza. The, the normal rain can be 100 millimeters of rain per year, so it's wow. very, very low. I the agree. soil are very, very sandy and deep, you know, and it's very windy, so it's a perfect place to produce 
organic grapes. So, yes. and, and it's, a, it's an organic wine made with that grape. And Poetico is, is a wine from Mendoza, Uco Valley, Vista Flores. Totally different terroir, okay? So, and, and it's not organic. So in terms of flavor, how was the difference in the profile? For no, you will find a lot of difference, you know, because uh, Sapan Sukum, it's a very easy drink wine. Uh, you know, it's young, fresh, uh, organic. No, no, the sulfur level is very, very low. There is no oak, mm -hmm. there is no water. In, in Poetico, there is more concentration, more flavor, more, uh, more character, you know, and, and, it's, uh, and there is a uh, bar relating, okay? okay. Mm. Mm, sounds like a nice, uh, fresh, lively wine uh, to try. And this is more of, as you say, more of a full-bodied, robust yeah. uh, wine exactly. for, for aging or for, for serious dinner parties. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think everybody, unless there's more to, I'd also like to hear about the 50th anniversary wine. So the 50th anniversary wine, can you tell us Ooh. a little bit about was chosen and what it's all. Kim Chen's got the picture for you. We were working a lot on that wine. <laughs> so I, I think it's going to be a big surprise for, for, for the guests, <laughs> for the customers. It's a beautiful wine. You will love it. There is a lot of concentration, flavor, and, in, and the wine is, is really, really unique. You will, you will see. Uh, it was a very strong selection of grape. You know, 100% of the wine was very, very well age in barrels and then we bottle the wine and we designed this project a few years ago you know for this moment so it's it's very special for sure yeah. everybody will enjoy so much all right well I've got i'm not to going to tell more i'm not going to tell more you know because <laughs> it's not a, uh, <laughs> you gotta just buy the wine and discover it <laughs> exactly it's a way yeah. to discover <laughs> exactly well, this has been amazing. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in on your Saturday afternoon. I hope you enjoyed these wines. And now you're going to have to try your own pairings and see what you like best with everything. Uh, Carl is saying thank you, as is Randine. And uh, for me as well, thank you so much, Maurizio, for, for sharing uh, all your knowledge about these lovely wines uh, and everybody for joining us today. Uh, and let you get back to your Saturday afternoon. And definitely, we're going to have to start planning that trip to come and see you in Mendoza. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. I'm so happy to be part of this, uh, this wonderful uh, family, which is Opinion. Uh, I feel so glad, you know, to be part of this. And um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about my wine, my country, my, my province, where I live. It's fantastic. And I can, you know, I can show uh, to use part of the uh, part, of, part of my 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 country, yes, you know what we do here and, and everything. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. bye.